Hi everyone, welcome back to Carl Fix. Today I'm just going to do a quick review, an overview of this NTAC DDR4 PC and RAM. Because it's come up on Amazon in the UK recently and I looked online to try and find a review for it and there's a few on YouTube but they're all in Spanish or other languages. So I thought while I've while I bought it, I'll stick up a quick review. And the reason I bought it is, is I run a Ryzen system, it's a few years old now, with a Ryzen 3600, and I only have 2400 megahertz memory in it. And everyone says that Ryzen runs way better on quicker memory. So this is RGB memory, and this is a DDR4, 16 gig, 3600 memory kit. So you get two sticks, of 8 gig RAM. So there's the box, it's a, compatible with Aura, MSI, um, Gigabyte and Asus Rock RGB syncing. So I have an MSI board but I don't use the RGB syncing, I'm not that bothered about RGB but I do like it to have the option and I do like it to flash in the rainbow for some reason but I don't mess about syncing everything up. You get a little quick instruction book and then there's the actual sticks of RAM. So you get two 8 gig sticks, get them out, normal DDR4 pin layout and then you get the NOTAC branding on the top, if I can get it to focus, and the RGB all along the top which I will give you a little quick um, shot of once I've installed it and there you can see the spec. And if it'll focus, yep, Shadow RGB DDR4 3600 2 times 8 gig kit. Entec, like I say, there's nothing on Amazon. These had one review on Amazon, they must be new into the UK on Amazon, and nobody seems to have bought them. And the reason why I jumped on these is the 3400 set is 80 pound the 3600 set is 82.99 but when i bought this i think yesterday it had 20 percent off so i actually got these two this set for 66 pounds so then i sell my old set i'm going to end up with a, a big ram upgrade for about 30 pound in the end so it was a bit of a no-brainer but as there's literally no reviews of this online i thought i'd uh give you a quick one so I won't mess about it as I chuck it all over the place anymore with inboxing we'll get it in the PC I'll show you what it looks like and then I'll run a couple of um, tests with my old RAM in and a couple of tests with the new RAM in and see what the differences are so I'll get back to you when I've done all of that so here's just a quick video of what the RAM actually looks like in the case as you can see it does its RGB floats down the colours. It's actually really hard to film unless I get really close in, so I will. You can see it floats down. That's the standard that it comes with out of the box. The rainbow effect, and there's the rest of my PC in case anyone's interested. I'll close the case up. Bit of glare there, but just as a quick rundown of my PC, obviously we've got this Entec 3600 16 gig of RAM. It's an AMD Ryzen 3600, a MSI NVIDIA 2070 Super, and um, it's a Lian Lee. Lee RGB fan fronted case I'm not really that bothered about RGB and the sinking and an EVGA 600 watt 80 plus rated power supply and an MSI Tomahawk Max motherboard so that's just a quick rundown of the spec of my PC to give you an idea as well of that and now what I'm going to do is go on to the PC and just show you a quick spreadsheet of a few benchmarks I did with the old 2004 500 meg RAM and against this and exactly the same system, only difference is the RAM. So I'll go on to that now.
So just as a quick addition to the last bit of the video, I've gone onto the MSI Dragon Center where you can change all your RGB settings just to show that this RAM is compatible and obviously you can change it to anything you want. So there we go back to the rainbow. Um, this is one called Meteor. So as you can see, it's going up and down. <coughs> um, flashing. You can have it on flashing, it flashes whatever colour you want. Colour cycle. So it flicks between all the different colours. So yeah, this RAM it does work with the MSI Dragon Center, as it states on the box. I just thought I'd quickly test that. Um, so I'll try and uh, obviously sync it all to, well it's all going to be on colour cycle because that's just what I'll leave it on. And as you can see now, I've put it on colour syncing, so the GPU, the RAM and the board all change colour and are all the same at the same time. So it works perfectly with syncing up the um, board, GPU. CPU fan if you had one and the card my actual case isn't plugged into the board so the RGBs on the case are, are done separately as you see all the internals work perfectly with this RAM okay everyone so yeah we're at the benchmark section of the video where I just ran a few benchmarks here with some older games a couple of new ones and then the general benchmarking tools that I could get for free. This is not an extensive benchmark. I'm not a major PC benchmarker. I'm not a mad for FPS person. But I thought I'd put something out there just so you can see the difference. So this column here is, <coughs> sorry, with the 2400 megahertz ADAR RAM. And this is with the NTEC 3600 RAM. This first one was just a uh, no overclock. So this is running a 30 OC on the core and a 50 memory overclock through MSI Afterburner. So a very, very minor overclock. So the PC is standard in Time Spy 4K is 9283. With the overclock, it's a 9376. And with the RAM, as you can see, it is a 9445. So... Uh, getting on for a, what, 8,800 points, 7,800 points better just because of the RAM in times by 4K. Heaven benchmark at 1440p Ultra. Heaven, as far as I can tell, will only do up to 1440. It's getting pretty old now. So you can see the average FPS is the same with a slightly better overall score and extra 10 points. Super Session, which I believe is a more modern version of Heaven, basically. You're getting an extra four points in score on that one. F1 2021 in the 4K built-in benchmark. This one I made a bit of a mistake on because I think I had my frame capping locked at 60, hence why they're both averaging 59 FPS. I didn't redo the 2400 one because I couldn't be bothered to take my RAM out just to do one extra benchmark. But I did redo this one with the frame capping off and it was capping, well, the average FPS was 98 with the 3800, uh, 3600 memory. So this one's a bit of an anomaly. Assetto Corsa, which is a driving racing simulator, if you don't know, the most of the games that I play on my PC are driving simulators so Assetto Corsa is an old game from 2013 and as you can see it probably shows in the benchmark that really it probably wasn't troubling my PC too much on either you obviously do get a better score slightly better average FPS user benchmark I think is this one is where the biggest difference is shown so user benchmark, if you don't know, is a benchmark that benchmarks your a PC overall and each individual hardware component. So on user benchmark, with the 2400 megahertz RAM in, it gave me an overall gaming rate of 82%, which is 
with a memory rating of 72.7. So if you jump over to the 3600 MHz RAM, you have an 88% gaming score and a 93, almost 94% memory rating, which is obviously like 20% better overall which is a huge gain in memory overall for future proofing and obviously if you look further down these or further into this particular set of benchmarks that i've got that when you're pushing a higher end game that's when it really does come into its own so we're going to tomb raider another old game 4k it's getting 100 fps average <coughs> Um, on high settings and 90 fps on ultra and it's the same over here with this higher ram and i think that is again because this is an old game my pc is not particularly struggling to run it and then the last one is world of tanks encore which i don't play world of tanks but apparently this is a new engine that was built for it recently and you can download the benchmark for it to make sure your PC is up to spec to run the new engine of World of Tanks. So as you can see, you go get 150-200 point um, addition using the higher memory. So what I would take from this is that you get a better and higher times by 4k score the user benchmark score says it all really that the memory gets a much much higher score and lifts the overall pc performance by five percent and then the world of tanks 4k on a modern engine also gives you well over 100 points extra so my conclusion to this is ddr3000 is the centec memory good is it worth the price yes at 80 pound i would say it's still cheap i got it for 66 pounds and i will sell my other ram so i'm going to be looking at maybe a 30 pound outlay maybe a bit less for a major upgrade in ram which future proofs my computer it looks better and overall with a rising cpu it's what everyone advises there is a caveat for that if you're playing older games tomb raider fortnite minecraft that type of game, do you need the higher memory RAM? Maybe if you're playing Fortnite on Ultra at 120, but generally people won't be. They'll be playing it on a lower end PC. You don't need the jump in RAM, in my opinion. It will not make that big a difference. But if you can get a deal like mine, where you're getting this for £66 and you can sell your old RAM, I think it's a no-brainer to upgrade. So, yep, yeah, that's my little mini review on this Entech RAM. I'm nearly at a thousand subs. If you like the review, hit me a like, favorite, subscribe, comment, whatever you want to do. And I hope you like the video. So, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.